What's going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today I want to talk to you about my tax-free savings account, what I've been doing, what I plan on doing in the foreseeable future, and everything else you need to know. But first, make sure you just hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Always greatly appreciate that. And with that said, let's get right to it. So portfolio is at around 80 or sorry, 98,000. Since me creating this, it is up 8%, so not too bad. Over this last week, it is up 2,200, so about 2%, kind of in line with the broader market. Happy with that. So far, I do still have a ton of cash, around 63,000, and I have my eyes still set on Barrick. And so today it did go down about 2.52% uh, today, meaning Friday, and I'm kind of still watching it. I do feel that it could potentially go down based on the technicals to around 2150, potentially even 20, somewhere around there, depending on what does happen. But overall, within the next two quarters, I feel like the broader market is going to either be stagnant, if not trend down. Of course, there might be an occasional kind of rally or whatever else, but I feel like Barrick might actually outperform the broader market. So this one is on my watch list and has been ever since I think it was around 20 or $19. So once again, I've been saying that almost every single video. A couple of things as well, I did buy a little bit more to my TD position because it did have a sell-off to I think as low as $70.80 on Thursday. So I did buy some at $80.30. So I didn't really catch the bottom, but of course uh, you can't go wrong with, for instance, right here, a 4.76% yield or just one of the big five banks. So in my opinion, it's a win-win. Uh, this is why it does take a long time to build a portfolio because you have to wait for those sell-offs, for the discounts, don't chase dividends. I've already explained all that. So once again, uh, when it comes down to some dividends, these are my latest ones. So Rio can, I did get my monthly one for $5.06. I got Enbridge, Magna, the big heavy hitters. The only one that most likely you won't see in the foreseeable future is Algonquin because based on my last video, they are gone. They're out of the portfolio because I feel like they are going to be cutting their dividend fairly soon and I do not want to hold them when that news is announced because that probably will be a good 15% red day. So once again, I just don't really like that stock in particular. With me being so heavily in cash, I think the dividends are going to suffer at least over the next quarter. But as things kind of pull down a little bit, this is where I'll obviously readjust accordingly. And the only other thing that I just wanted to kind of share with you is deposits. So I still did my weekly deposit of $200. As I said, I'm going to be doing roughly between two and $500 every single week, depending on what is available in my own personal circumstances. I also do have several other accounts, one with TD, Interactive Brokers, National Bank. Um, so quite a lot out there and I kind of have to have money in each of those and especially considering i do invest quite heavily in a lot of growth stocks especially with my other channels financial journey one of them trending stocks so i do invest in a lot of growth stocks uh, within the u.s market so i've been kind of putting a lot of money towards that because it's been fairly good the last couple weeks but still no matter what 200 uh in this account and the only things i've been doing from what you can see from buys and sells so i did buy a td reinvest in rio can uh I did buy a little bit, so about 10 shares of Suncor when that sold off at 43. Didn't catch the bottom because I went down to 41, if I remember correctly. And then this is my Algonquin sells. So the last of right here, so sell 5,000 or 700 shares, $5,900. So yeah, pretty standard stuff. I did sell Bell, I didn't really catch the high. So I sold at 54.90, 800 shares but I feel like it does need to pull back down to around 51. You cannot ever go wrong with Bell. So I think if you're ever investing in the Canadian market, there are several must haves, one of which is Enbridge, there's um, Bell and obviously the five big banks. So in my opinion, uh, you need Bell in your portfolio, especially you cannot go wrong with that yield, whatever. Uh, so I think it's like 7.25% or 7.5, something like that. But once again, Bell is a must have in my opinion. So once that does pull back down to 51-ish, then I'll be allocating a lot of my spare cash to this. So like I said, the only one I'm going to be really watching for is Barrick in the foreseeable 
foreseeable future and for this upcoming week. But other than that, I'm just going to be enjoying the ride of the market. So let me know your thoughts. What have you been buying over the last little bit? What have you been selling? What have you been doing? But don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Always greatly appreciate that. And one final thing I just wanted to share with you. So Mumu is heading to Canada. I'm actually thinking about moving some money from Interactive Brokers to Mumu, but they are heading to Canada and Mumu is actually a very big broker in the States as well as Asia. So they're coming to Canada. They do have some promos as you can kind of see right there. Just sign up by only using your phone number, link in the description below and also the comments. So take advantage of these promos while you can and let me know your thoughts on Mumu. Uh, I have been getting a lot of good feedback based on them and yeah, they're, they're definitely fairly good um, once again. So let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And with that said, I appreciate all of you watching.